Tell me. Kamar, Jubita, tell me. Jessalyn, which topic you were studying previously? The topic that we have, we have discussed in the previous class. So we have completed this topic. We have completed these topics. So this topic means last topic that is written in your copy. Please tell. You are discussing the control and coordination. So which topic you were discussing previously? That you have written in a copy, you might. You are attending the class. You are attending the class. Then you might be preparing the notes, na? No one is here to tell me. This means you are not preparing. Shah, Hashid, Zeba. Yes, sir. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? This topic which you are preparing. This means nobody is preparing their notes. So I should talk to your parents that you are not. Sir. Sir. Yes. Yes. I am listening. Sir, I was I was not able to join the last class, so I don't know what topic was there. I only learned about Ali Hamam's class. Who is this one? Ma'am, uh, sir, Jogita. Jogita. Okay. So let's do with this one. Okay. We stop at Madhu Lal Nagar. Just in short. Yeah, 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 yeah. We stop at Madhu Lal Nagar. I, I understood. I remember this one that I was discussing this Sari Badam was with the bell, like okay, second largest part of the brain, center of control and coordination. Okay. I am chapter one behind, so I'm not studying this chapter. Okay, but uh, okay, so we will give you the backup. So please keep in mind. So let's start. So what we are studying? Let me discuss first that what we are studying. So we, dear students, we are studying the control and coordination chapter. What we are studying? Let me explain you that what we are studying was where we are. Okay, so we are just studying the control. and coordination chapter coordination chapter in this chapter we just studied about the the control and coordination is control or it is there are the two agencies that control that help in the control and coordination one is the nervous system nervous system and another one is the endocrine system endocrine system the nervous system and endocrine system are the two agencies that have in our body that help us to control and coordinate to respond to the external stimulus or internal stimulus if something is mishappening in our body if something is not properly working or if we need to respond so there is if we touch a hot plate if uh, if uh, if the temperature of the body rises the ph of the body is not uh, uh, working properly if we eat the food the food is being pumped heart rate Okay, and other things. Everything that is, so if our body is working properly, it means that it is controlled by two agencies. One is the nervous system, another one is the endocrine system. Endocrine system. If we talk in short, that it secretes some hormones, hormones, hormones that are the chemical messenger, that are the chemical messenger, messenger. These are the chemical messengers that are made up of protein and that are the fluid type of structure that is mixed in the blood. For example, if our body has water deficiency, if we if we are not drinking water, if the water is not sufficiently present in our body, then during that time, adrenal gland that is adrenal gland that is present over the kidney, sorry, adrenal gland not, it is a pituitary gland that secretes a special hormone that is anti diuretic hormone. Pituitary gland that is present on our head that release that is released by that hormone, uh, sorry, by pituitary gland and that control the that's control. The, uh, the filtration of kidney means it will not it will not allow the kidney to uh, release release the water. Okay. Uh, it allow the kidney to again reabsorb the water. Okay, so that's why our urine become concentrated. We are urinic. So that is controlled by hormone. If the blood sugar is that if the blood sugar rises, now body feed some tomato potatoes or something. The blood sugar rises. So that blood sugar is controlled by insulin hormone that is secreted by uh, pancreas. 
okay so there are different different types of glands that is being secreted oh, sorry hormone that is secreted uh, by endocrine system so that that part we are going to study it talking about the system nervous system we are talking about so what happened in the nervous system is nervous system what we are studying right now nervous system we have divided into three parts one is the central nervous system the second one is the peripheral nervous system and the third one is the autonomic nervous system the the first one is called the first one is called central nervous system and it is it is central nervous system central nervous system central nervous system okay central nervous system and it consists of mainly brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord okay so we are studying central nervous system right now that is we are studying brain okay now talking about this brain what we are studying what we have studied we have studied that brain consists of three main major parts one is the the first part is the fore brain fore brain the second part is the mid brain mid brain and the third part is the hind brain in the third. That the third part is the hind brain, the hind brain. Okay. Now this fore brain further consists of three parts. One is the olfactory lobes, olfactory lobes. Second part is called cerebrum or cerebral, cerebral hemisphere. Hemisphere, and the third part is called it's called di n c di n c phenol. This midbrain only consists of a part that is called optic lobes, optic lobes, and this hindbrain again consists of three part. One is the cerebral cerebellum cerebellum. The another one is the cerebellum. Another one is the uh, pons veruli. The third one is and the third one is medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. If I discuss this one, that olfactory lobes help in in what what is the main function of olfactory lobes? Help in olfactory lobes help in the olfactory lobes help in olfactory means smell smell it help in smell cerebellum hemisphere it is the largest part of the brain in short i am just explain largest part of brain and control it control all those activities it control all those activities which are suitable or we can say that which are uh responsible for uh, uh just we can simply say that that is intelligence memory okay i, I explained you in the previous class that if we if, if someone drink rum 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 is wine in, in india or oh, sorry rum is wine i don't know whether it is a hindi name or, or english name now so if someone drink wine rum so what are the, uh, the those activities that is being uh, it, uh affected after drinking wine that is intelligence 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 second region region okay speech speech okay okay intelligent region speech or we can say that uh, memory memory so all all of these is controlled by this dynsy for control what does dynsy for control dynsy for control ph is the third part of the brain ph thirst hunger hunger or you can say that uh, temperature temperature anger emotion emotion that is controlled by this one optic lobes the word optics it is responsible for vision vision and here and here here you know that vision is also controlled by this cerebrum 
and optic lobes also. So there is not it is not necessary that only a particular one or uh, better let it be area area so let it be because uh, this is not in my control that I I should give you the permission. So let it be whatever the name is. Okay, so for this class, in the next class, we have to change. Okay, so that okay, so optic, optic looks and hearing. Okay, and uh, yeah, so if the vision is controlled by this, uh, uh by this optic look, so it is also controlled by so a single function can be controlled by more than one part of the brain. It is not necessary that only a single type of function can be controlled by one part of the brain. Now, talking about the hind brain, hind brain controls what high brain controls voluntary action. Voluntary, voluntary actions. That action that is in your, in your, in your will. Okay, that you, that you can control by your own choice. There's, for example, locomotion, locomotion. Okay, body posture, body, body posture, posture. Okay, and third one is it is it is cerebrum is also called center of control and position. Center of, center. Of coordination, of coordination is also called center of center of coordination. Okay, and pons. What does pons control? Pons is a nerve bed fiber that generally controls, or it connect, 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 cerebellum, cerebellum, cerebellum. To mid brain. Very well to mid brain. And what's the function of medulla oblongata? Medulla we were discussing, and medulla oblongata, the function of medulla oblongata is actually uh, it controls involuntary action, involuntary actions. The action that is not in your in your you cannot control that one. For example, vomiting. Vomiting. Heart rate. Heart rate. Okay. Uh, uh, peristaltic movement. Peristaltic movement. So please note it down. Everybody, please note it down. Let's make the start. Make, make a short mark for this. Is not enough. Everybody has to win. Is not So, what are the involuntary actions? What are involuntary actions? So, what those are the involuntary Involuntary actions are those actions that is not in your control. Okay. Involuntary actions are those. No, so, the examples? Example, for example, vomiting, heart rate, parasitic movement. Okay. No, uh, sneezing. Okay. Okay. And what is... Uh, 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 rom, uh, robencephalon. Robencephalon is the other name for uh, for hand. Okay, this is the other name for hand. For example, four brain is going to have a name that is pro sensifelon. Pro sensi sensifelon. So the, the similar name is going, uh, given for uh, the hand brain that is robencephalon. Okay, got it. Yes. So, Done, sir. Eye blinking is an involuntary. Uh, eye blinking, you can say that eye blinking is uh, it can you cannot control the eye blinking for a long time. For example, can you control a, a, your eye blinking for a period of one or two hours? No, it is not possible. That is not in your will. 
but you can control your movement if you are not if you don't want to move your body parts for a for one or two hours you can sit but you cannot keep your eyes open for a for for one or two hours so this is an involuntary action that you cannot control it you can control for temporary for one to four one minute two minute three minute five minutes an hour but you cannot control it for for long time so that is why eye blinking is also a type of we can say that it is also an involuntary action okay similar is the is the is the breathing you can control breathing rate if you stop breathing though so i have stopped breathing. can you control it for for one or two hours no you cannot control you this is not in your brain but if you if you don't want to lift your hand up for an hour you cannot don't want to lift it it is it is involuntary it is voluntary action but eye blinking vomiting if you are having vomiting for example you cannot control it you have to vomit you can control for 5 minute 10 minutes 1 hour half an hour but you cannot control it permanently so these are involuntary action. involuntary action does not mean that it is for 5 to 10 minutes if you are controlling it means permanent control got it Now moving to the next part. If, does everybody know, or should I move to other other? No. Is there anyone writing? Is still writing? Should I move? Okay. So moving to the medulla oblongata, you need to uh, we need to talk about medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is the posterior most in the simplest part of the brain. It is the posterior. Posterior means we have done this one also. I think I thought so. Yeah. Is there anyone? Or should I? Okay, okay. Good. If there is anyone who is not writing, that it is the posterior most part and the simplest part of the brain. It's the simplest part of the brain. The lower part of medulla oblongata extends backward. What is this medulla oblongata? Let me explain you here. Let me explain you. This is this one is actually we we'll talk about this one. This one is medulla oblongata. This is the simplest part. It is not having any curve or something. This is pons, and this is the medulla oblongata. This, uh, this one. So, but it said that uh, it, it goes down to uh, form the spinal cord. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a spinal cord that is arising from the brain. Yeah, but then but you it, said that this is small part of the oblongata. It is. It is the simplest part. Simplest part. Simply oh. this is because it is not having any curve like this in brain. This one, this one. It is simple, just a part, just a piece. Okay. Uh, this uh, when it extends, it forms its, uh, its extension is uh, from uh, spinal cord. What my point? What my point? Yes. Sir. So this is the simplest part of the of the brain that is spinal cord and generally responsible for controlling involuntary action. That is what action that is not uh, that cannot be controlled by other. Okay, for example, breathing, eye blinking, uh, vomiting, sneezing. Okay, so this these are controlled by these are involuntary action. We cannot control this one. So here the, it is a posterior. Posterior means the back side. The posterior most means the, it is the posterior most and the simplest part of the brain. Lower part of medulla medulla extend backward. Okay, to form a spinal cord. To form what? A spinal cord. So if someone uh, asked you that from which part of the brain? The spinal cord arises. So this one is the question that it is the medulla oblongata from which the spinal cord arises, and it mainly controls the involuntary action. It mainly controls the involuntary action activities such as peristaltic movement. What is peristaltic movement? When the angle of the foot, during the angle of the foot, the foot is being uh, pushed like this. this. The foot is being pushed downward, and so it like be... the uh, it's when the esophagus uh, pushes down the foot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is called prostrating. The esophagus has been pushing down the food, and this uh, pushing downward of food uh, to the stomach is called prostrating movement. So, okay. Vomit, for example, vomiting, coughing, respiration, vomit is something that we go by the metal Okay, so note it down.
when you done please let me know okay and everybody should have to maintain their notes nobody was answering me that which topic i have uh, done previously because these are important i am telling you that these notes are very important most of the questions in the examination come from these notes if you have memorized these notes properly none of the question is going to be there in the in the examination that you will not be answered you will be able to answer each and every question from these notes so please study them thoroughly make a proper notes make separate copy for bio physics chemistry maths done Sir, so, uh, uh, this module the data connected to the air pipe? Wind pipe? No, no. It goes to the spinal cord. Spinal cord is not connected with pipe, wind pipe. Wind pipe is a part of uh, respiratory system. Got it? Should I move to the spinal cord? Yes, sir. Now, what we are studying? We were studying this, these portions. Let me explain you one more time. So now we have studied the brain. The brain is protected in a in a uh, bony or, or or a skull or cranium, which is made up of eight bones, and uh, it is going to have. It is protected by three three layers of membrane, that is meninges. Okay, and uh, moreover, there is a fluid present inside the brain. Okay, that is called cerebrospinal fluid that we have discussed in the previous class. That cerebrospinal fluid. What does the function of cerebrospinal fluid? That it protect the brain from sudden injuries or shock. That we have discussed in the previous class. That if you place a coin in the bucket and you if you start uh, moving this bucket, then this coin will stuck this side of the bucket. But if you place this coin having water, and then if you put this bucket and move this bucket, then this coin will not stuck with the walls. Same is the function of cerebrospinal fluid that it will not allow the walls of the brain to contact with the, uh, with the wall of the brain sorry with the wall of this uh, uh, skull okay getting sudden shock or injuries but, okay. so it protect the brain the protection is done by bony cover heart cover energies layer csf moreover we have studied the function of different different part of the brain now we are just talking about the spinal cord got it spinal cord so let's move to the spinal cord. What is the function of the spinal cord? Let's talk about it. Spinal cord is, is the extension. You see that you have seen that the medulla oblongata is the uh, part of the brain, the posterior part of the brain, the last part of the brain, or the last part of the hind brain from which the spinal cord arises. It is so we can say that uh, it is the extension. Spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata. And actually, actually, you see here that these are the vertebral columns of the backbone. That you see here, this is a hard part. It is not the spinal cord. The spinal cord that is that is the backbone. That is the backbone that you touch. That you touch in the middle of your back. Okay, so that bone is called backbone. But this backbone, this you this structure, this is structure, this bone uh, is having some cavity, having some cavity, and inside this cavity, uh, a thick, a thick fiber or thick structure is present. That is called, that is yellow colored substance that is present here. This is a spinal cord. The spinal cord is protected inside the backbone or the vertebral cord. These are called vertebral cord. What we call them? We call them vertebral cord. Okay. So, okay. so so these are the vertebrates, vertebral columns. Uh, okay, and inside this, uh, the the spinal cord is protected. But what my point? What my point? Like the peripheral in the pen. Okay, the outside covering is uh, the outside. Uh, there is a vertebral column that 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 is bone that is protecting the, the spinal cord. Got it? It is about forty five centimeter long. It is about 45, 45 centimeter long, and uh, we can see that. Uh, it has a specialized protection over it that is formed by vertebral column and it extends from the uh, brain brain to waist region. Waist region means the uh, thigh or you can say that the up to the hips. Okay. In extent, uh, uh, waist region up to the waist, maybe it may be waist. So it is, it is present up to the Got my point? Okay. Yes. And you see that these are the, these are the some nerves that are coming from this. 
see there, these nerves are coming from this spinal cord. This from this spinal cord. These are the nerves. Okay. So these are the nerves that is that is going to different different part of our body. Okay. So these are controlled by vertical. Uh, these are uh, sorry. These the, from these uh, the from this spinal cord. The spinal nerves arises and how many spinal nerves are there? There are thirty one pairs. Thirty one pairs of spinal nerves arises. Got it? How many? Uh, 31 pairs of spinal nerves arises from this spinal cord. Got it? And uh, this is protected by vertebral column and there are extra protection that is meninges that was also present in the brain. Let, let me show you that brain is also protected by the three, three layers. That is the meninges. These three membranous layers are present inside the brain. Over this, over this there is a skull, hard bony covering. But there are special cushion like structure, membrane like structures. Uh, so, similarly, the spinal cord is also protected by these. Spinal cord is also protected by these layers. Got my point? Got my yes. point? So, moving to this one yes. again. <laughs> so, moving this one, the brain, uh, sorry, spinal cord is also protected. Okay. Uh, with a specialized layer that is called meninges. Moreover, the, from the head region, uh, from the, you know that the brain is protected inside the hard bony cover that is the skull. And from this skull, there is an aperture. There is an aperture from which this spinal cord comes out. There is an aperture from which the spinal cord comes out. Okay, and this aperture or uh, this portion, this hole is called a special name is uh, for this hole is given that is. Foramen, foramen magnum. Magnum. What it? What it? Foramen magnum. Foramen magnum is that hole from which this spinal cord arises. So here it is being written that it is the extension of medulla oblongata. You know that uh, from medulla oblongata spinal cord arises and it comes out of the skull through an through the aperture called foramen magnum. The aperture from which the spinal cord arises from the skull that is called foramen magnum. It is 45 centimeter long, thick, and extend from brain to waist. It is protected by vertebral column, and extra protection is given by many things. Yeah, like the in brain, there are the three layers that are the three layers that is uh, arcanoid, dura mater, and pia mater. There are three layers of membrane. Similarly, here is also three layers of meninges are also present. Got it? Please note it down. Note it down. Can you again extend? Uh... Uh, that 31 pairs part. 31, 31, pairs of, pairs? Yeah, 31 pairs of spinal nerves arises from this. We want to discuss this one further in the next slide. Okay, so there are the nerves that are coming. You see that there are some nerves that are coming from this, this is spinal part. You see this yellow color portion, this red like structure that is coming. Okay, but these are 31 are coming. These 31 pairs. For example, one. This, this is two now form one one pair. The another two, these two, this is one pair, this is two pair, this is third pair, this is fourth pair, fourth pair, this is fifth pair. So this type, if you count it, you will you will get 31 pairs of spinal nerves arises. Okay, from this one, this one. So that is going to different different part of our brain. Brain spinal cord plays a very important role in control importance. You see that the spinal cord from the spinal cord, 31 pairs of spinal nerve arises. But from brain, only 12. 12 pairs of cranial nerves arise. 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And they are 31 pairs. More than twice arises from the spinal cord. Got it? Got it? Yes, so please note it down.
Is there anyone who is still writing? Is there anyone? Uh, yes, sir. It's the last point. Okay. Note it down. Yeah. So should we draw the should we draw the uh, like try to draw no, the no, picture? No, 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 no. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Moving to the next part is that when you see the transverse section, that right, means when you start seeing it from the upside. Okay. Example, this is a spinal cord. Okay, this is the spinal cord. And when you look, look it at the top, at the top, okay, so you will find this type of structure. This type of structure that is white, uh, white surrounding, it is white surrounding. And this zone is called outer zone. We call it outer zone. It is white, and this matter is called. We don't have much. You know, uh, the, we don't have study for, uh, thoroughly for for this one because scientists are studying. This is studying the physical part of the body. So this matter, this is called white. The outer zone is called white matter. White matter. White matter. And this black, this black portion, this gray portion, the butterfly shape structure is is present is uh, inside the spinal cord. So this is called gray matter. This is called gray gray matter. Okay. This is called gray matter. So and this is inner zone. This is inner zone. Got it? So when you see the transverse section of a spinal cord, show the presence of inner zone that is butterfly shape. You see this is a butterfly shape, and it is called gray matter. And the outer zone in this zone is is called the white. Got my point? Got my point? And there are 31 pairs of spinal arteries from the spinal cord. So, note it down, please. Done? Done, dear students. Why are you telling? Is there anyone? Yes, sir. Who is still writing? Should I move to the next slide? Yes. Now, what is the function of reflex? Uh, sorry, what is the function of the spinal cord? The, the function of the spinal cord is uh, the function of the spinal cord is just it has in reflex section. So this is the function of spinal cord. 
just because i got the electric shock so that is being realized the realize, realization that you got an electric shock it is after you have removed your so this is an spontaneous instant process that you when you got an electric shock you remove your hand and or if you touch a hot plate or something you remove your hand instantly why because because that that this function is controlled by reflex action okay uh, sorry that's uh, sorry by the spinal cord and brain is not directly involved. so so if i'm saying that what is a reflexation so you can you can say that these are sudden response of the body to some external stimulus it is a sudden response if someone if you get uh, uh, means, uh, if you got a uh, bright light in front of your eyes you instantly close your eyes why because you want to protect this is this is if something is happening or something is entering to your eye you instantly close your eyes okay it is done suddenly it is a sudden response instant response to some external stimulus in which brain is not directly involved brain is not directly involved okay uh, that is performed by spinal cord okay and what and carried out by these are carried out by spinal cord only with the help of reflex arm so note it down what is the functions what are the what are reflex sections note it down the definition of reflex section Are you done? Please let me know. Don't. Okay, done. Is there anyone who is still writing? So let's let's go further. Now talking about the reflex sections. What are the reflex sections? There are different different types of reflex sections, but uh, you need to memorize or you can even you know, uh, you know, uh, But you need to. I'm going to explain it. There are different different types of reflex sections. One is the innate reflex section. Innate reflex sections are those reflex sections that do not require even one time done. That are freely previously installed in our body. In our pocket. Okay. For example, if a if a if a child, okay, uh, who is uh, who is infant, who is readily born, or, or who is uh, who is just born for five to six days, you you see that he start moving his hand like this way, and uh, you see that uh, if someone enter, he, he will blink his eyes. He uh, he or she, okay, or uh, that kid also sneeze, okay. Uh, uh, eye blinking is done by him, and he respire the movement of diaphragm. So these are the actions that are present since childhood, and these are called involuntary actions also. So since you know that the spinal cord is the part of medulla oblongata, or it is an extension of medulla oblongata, okay. So 
the similar function that is of medulla oblongata is also controlled by the spinal cord. That are the involuntary actions. For example, these are okay. So since childbirth and like sneezing, sneezing is also controlled by medulla oblongata and it is also a type of reflexes. That is prelinked. So that is called innate reflexes, or we can call it involuntary action also. Sneezing, eye blinking, eye lizard. Okay. So these are both controlled by reflex uh, spinal cord as well as the medulla oblongata. Got it? Got it? Yes. Next one is habitual reflexation. Habitual reflexations are those reflexations that require one time learning. And after you learn, it becomes the habit of the student. Become the habit of the students. Okay. For example, some such actions require constant learning in the beginning. Okay. Some uh, require these means some uh, you can simply say that they require one time learning. If you learn that, for example, walking. When a kid start learn uh, start learning walking, okay. Every kid is everyone has to learn the art of walking, that how to walk, walk. So once you learn, then you will be able to move when you will be able to walk. So, like in the driving, also, if you if you don't know the driving, so if you uh means if you start driving a car and you are at the initial stages, if somebody comes uh in front of, of your eyes or in front of your car, then you might press the brake or sometimes you might do something else, okay. Uh, you may be pass the accelerator by by mistake. But if you are perfect in learning, then what will happen in in the absence of mind? If somebody comes in your car in front of your car, then you will press the brake on. So because you have learned the driving, and this is an innate sorry, this is an habitual action. Okay, this for example, sometimes if I used to may uh, go to the uh, uh, my uh, nanny or my grandmother, okay, paternal grandmother. So when I go to her, then she sometimes forget my name. And uh, called me by my uh, by my mama or uncle's name. Okay, so uh, so why? Because she is habitual of uh, taking her uh, name of his of his son. And I used to go there and sometimes. Okay, so this has happened and suddenly, suddenly, uh, parents or someone or some some other uh, means we accidentally or or we by mistake take the name of other persons. Okay, uh, uh, wrong. Uh, and just just this is a type of habitual interaction because in the absence mm -hmm. of mind we do this okay so that is habitual if you are having a habit of doing something so it can be in the absence of your mind it uh, these words can be uttered by your by your uh, by your time okay so this is called habitual reflex section habit so they require only one time work constant learning and after you learn you become perfect and that is that becomes the habitual reflex section and that is not controlled directly by the brain that is controlled by Spinal cord. Got it? Got it? And the third one is the conditional reflexation. Conditional reflexation is that action that is that is conditional. For example, for example, if certain conditions are satisfied, okay, so these actions automatically yes, yes, take place. Yes. For example, salivations. Salivations, for example, in case if you see a something sweet dish or some special dish that you like. So you will feel the taste of that of that dish in your mouth, and then salivary gland starts secreting saliva to digest that cellulose, that cytoplasm. Okay, so this is the same thing that uh, that the actions occurs automatically when certain specific conditions are satisfied. For example, salivation or smelling are delicious. Yeah. So, so then, this, uh, like if you feel uh, if you feel uh, if you like if your hand is in the fire, okay, and like uh, you uh, you get. Like burn, okay. Can it be considered conditional reflex uh, reflex action or? Yeah, this will be this will be considered a conditional reflex action. If you test the hot plate, that is a conditional reflex action. Okay. Okay. Certain conditions are satisfied. Got it? So do this one. Note note it down. Note it down just. Yes. Can you show the? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying something? No, no, I think so.
Dan? Okay. So what about uh, punching and kicking? Are those uh, habitual reflection or innate reflection no. actions? No, they are not uh, uh, habitual or innate. They are just foreign reactions. You can punch someone with your with your belt. Okay, it is not an action that is not in your uh, in your. Uh, it is it is in your belt. Okay, so the reaction is controlled by seri seri venom, not not this is spinal cord. Okay. My voice is low. Is it okay now? Should I use the mic? Then let me use this one. My voice is low. Is I'm audible now? Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. So moving to this part is that uh, have you written this one? Whole past tell me first. Uh, tell me. Okay, so should I move to the next part? That is conditional reflection. So note it down fast. Should I move to the next part? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, okay. Note, note it down fast. Only right up to here. Only right up to here. Delicious. Sir? Only right up to delicious food. Okay, done. Yes, sir. Yeah, done. Now, what you need to uh, uh, learn here is that there is reflex action. One is reflex action. Okay. This is the sudden and, uh, sudden and response to the external stimulus in which 
which are taken by the spinal cord and brain is not directly involved in it. Okay, so that is reflexation. There is another term that is reflex arc. Reflex arc. Before understanding this, we need to understand the types of neuron. Types of neuron. We have studied neuron okay, in the previous classes. Neuron are the functional unit of nervous system. Okay, they have dendroid cell body. Okay, uh, exam and synaptic terminals. How they participate? Synapse, synapse. We have studied this one previously. Now talking about the neuron types of neuron, there are two types of neuron. One is sensory neuron. Sensory neuron. The another one is the motor neuron. Motor neuron. And intermediate is also present. That is interneuron. Interneuron or relay neuron. Or relay. So what happened to the sensory neuron? Sensory neuron carry impulse from sense organ. Sense organ. Sense organ to brain or spinal cord. Brain or spinal cord. Spinal cord. But in case of relaxation, brain is not directly involved. So the sensory neuron will take this message to the spinal cord only. Okay. From where? From sense organ. What are sense organs? It can be a skin, it can be eyes, it can be nose, it can be tongue. The motor neuron carry impulse from, from spinal cord, spinal cord or brain, brain to effector. Effector means effector means muscles. Got it? And the third word is the interneuron. Interneuron is present in between of the spinal cord. Okay, this is inter. This is inter. Got it. Got it. Yes. Got it. The interneuron is present here. That we're going to see. So, what is reflex action? The path taken by, for example, first you touch a hot plate. What would happen? When you touch a hot plate, so what is involved in sensing this one is a skin, means sense organ. Sense organ. After this touch of means or the sense of hotness is being transferred to the to the spinal cord with the help of sensory sensory neuron. Neuron. Then sensory neuron take this message to the spinal cord. Spinal cord. And where it where inside the spinal cord, what, what is present? That is uh, interneuron is present. Interneuron. Interneuron is present. Okay. And from when the spinal cord transmits the message, then it will again carry it by motor nerve, motor neuron. And after the motor neuron, then it reaches to the effector, the muscles, the effectors. Effector. The muscles, muscles. So for an is for the what is it? This? this is a reflex action. What is this? This is the reflex action. And the path taken by reflex action means when a reflex action is taking place, when you touch a hot plate and when removing the hand, this is a reflex action. When you touch a hot plate, instantly you remove your hand. This is a reflex action. So what happened in touching in between a touching a hot plate and the, till the removing of your hand? So first, the skin sense, the sense organ is involved, then it is, the message is being transferred to the spinal cord. Spinal cord then transfer the message to the motor nerve and the motor nerve transfer the message to the effector and the effector contracts and you remove your hand. So simply, we can simply say that this is the path taken by path taken taken to perform to perform reflex section. Reflex section. And this is called, it is called reflex arc. It is called reflex arc. So what is reflex arc? The path taken by, uh, uh, by reflex action is called reflex arc. Okay. So here it is. The path taken by reflex action by sensory motor nerve is called uh, uh, sensory motor nerve to perform reflex action. To perform, here it is unit to perform Reflex, reflex action is called reflex arc. It's called reflex arc. Okay. And what is this? It is being involved. For example, this is a skin. 
a skin in a skin behind the skin there is a dendroid this is a neuron is present that is sensory neuron it is taking uh, taking to the message to the uh, to the spinal cord this is spinal cord the transverse section of a spinal cord and then there is a uh, the third step is interneuron is present this is interneuron and then from a spinal cord it is being transferred with the uh, with the the impulse is transported to the with the help of motor nerve this is motor nerve neuron and then it is transferred to the muscle that is sphincter so it includes what sense organs sense neuron spinal cord motor nerve and effectors from here it is like this way effectors muscles okay so uh, sometime in the question it is done that, that which is the correct correct uh, path for the for the sense uh, for the reflex arc so sometime it is written at the first this is written as the second then third then fourth okay and then sometime it is written as first then second then second then third so you need to know that the correct place the correct order of this one is the sense organ then sensory neuron then third one is spinal cord then fourth one is neuron motor neuron and fifth one is the effector what my point what my point everybody yes sir so yes, please sir. note it down please note it down What is reflex arc? So it's being asked in the examination. Okay. Sometimes this diagram is given to you, and there is uh, boxes here. You mention the name here. Okay, there will be path is shown to you. So you need to mention this. The second part is sensory neuron. So in the diagram, the diagram is given, and then it is being asked to label one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So please note it down. That you need to make it proper, proper diagram of this. Nancy. Done. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who is still writing? Yes. So take this screenshot of this one and you have to make this make this one. At home, okay. Take this screen we'll shot of this of this diagram and please make this one properly in, in, in your copy. Okay, the reflex section. Sorry, this is reflex art. Reflex art. Sir, so, so uh, reflex action is a part of reflex art. Art. No, no. This is the path. Path of reflex action is called reflex art. Oh, okay. Path. The path in performing the reflex action. This is the, this is perform, this is the reflex action path. That if you touch something, then you will feel the effect of the contraction of muscles. This is the path taken by reflex action. That was called reflex art. Okay. So okay. next is the endo endocrine system, and since endocrine system is a uh, fresh topic, okay. So I'm going to explain you here, says since only till here. And beside the nervous system, that we uh, uh, earlier gave you that when I started the class, I uh, was this. Yeah, yes, yes. Sir, yes. can you show the diagram again? Yes, why not? Okay, sir. Thank you. So, moving to this part that I have discussed first, I give you the explanation regarding to this one. Okay. That this one we, we were studying this topics. Okay. The brain we have studied, the spinal cord we have studied, the function of spinal cord, reflex action, reflex action, reflex arc, reflex arc. We have studied. Okay. 
now uh, we shall be moving towards this pns and uh, ans are not in your syllabus so i'm just skipping these two but you need to know that that is a peripheral nervous system very peripheral nervous system and we have written this one in your copy okay so don't need to now we are just talking to the another type of uh, controlling agency that helps with the controlling coordination and that is liquid control and coordination because liquid is being secreted that is hormone are in liquids and that's why it is also called chemical coordination chemical chemical coordination so endocrine systems uh, is the another agency that that is being used for uh, for controlling coordination so beside the nervous system there is another endocrine system that plays an important role in maintaining the control and coordination okay endocrine system consists of okay endocrine system consists of endocrine glands which secrete hormones okay which secrete hormones so note it down till here note it note it down that secrete hormones Uh, okay, we are just going to finish the class. Okay, within two minutes. So, we still note it down till here. Then we'll going to finish the class. We'll discuss the endocrine system in the next class. So when you're done, please let me know. and type the next topic that is hormone. Next topic of class is hormone. Next topic is hormones. Okay, so please note it down because if I ask you in the next class that which, uh, what is the next topic, so you must tell me. Otherwise, I start teaching the previous topic and the whole time goes on this one. Okay, this is the next topic that we're going to study. For those, okay. So when you're done, please let me know. Beside nervous system. Is no, there anyone who is still writing? Yes, sir. Done? No, sir. Write it down. 